Well, I filmed a nice little review raving about this lunchbox. <laughs> and by the looks of it, you can tell she bit the dust. <laughs> so I did this review and talked about how great this lunchbox is, which I still love this lunchbox. It just, it needs a little TLC. So I felt obligated to film a repair video because I thought, you know what? I can't just throw a review like that uh, up on YouTube and not, not show what happened here. Okay, so I've had this lunchbox for um, like a year and a half. If, if you didn't see the review video, this thing is battery powered. It runs on a schedule and just heats your lunch up. I absolutely love it, but it did bite the dust. So I noticed that my food was cold one day and I looked down here and it said that the hot plate temperature was like 76 or something like that. So I knew it wasn't heating and I'll, I'll try to throw a picture up where I actually diagnosed it. I just did that quickly at work. And then I ordered these. So this is the part number for the little doodad that does the heating. Now this is not like a ceramic element or something like that. This is a really weird little electronic gadget and I, I forget, forget the name. I, I don't even want to try to pronounce it. I, uh, I got an idea, but I'm, I'm going to butcher it. Anyways, it just uses the thermoelectric effect. So if you take a thermocouple and you have a, a differential temperature, then you can get a voltage out of that. Well, this is like the reverse of that. You put voltage in and you get your differential temperature. So one side of this will get cold. I believe it's the side with the writing and the other side gets hot. Okay. So I'm not, unfortunately, I got to get this thing up and going because I use it every day. So I'm not going to film like a huge in-depth DIY, how to fix this thing. I'm just going to hit the highlights. If you're mechanically inclined, you should have no problem. All right. First of all, lithium batteries are dangerous. Uh, they can put out an extreme amount of current. So go ahead and get that unhooked. There's screws in the bottom. And once you undo those, this whole assembly just falls out. And then you've got the hot plate up here. Anyways, keep ripping and tearing until you get to this point right here. And I'm going to get this out of here by taking out this connector. And then we're going to work on it and get it all back together. Well, I'll show it in steps, you know what I'm saying? But I got to get this out to work on it. So, quick tangent, I did buy a new lunchbox because mine was getting pretty ragged out. And I have the link to this on the video where I did the review. It just, it's not made by Lunchies. It just happens to fit perfectly. You got this little compartment here and just slides right in there. It's also a little bigger, like it has space for another Tupperware here, some other things here. Okay, let me get this out and then we'll take a look at it. So it looks like the side with the writing is the cold side. So I'm going to get these off of here. And you want these surfaces to be very clean. And then you have to go back and apply heat sink compound. So this is my favorite scraper in the world. Any scraper will work. But since I'm doing a video, I'll go ahead and show this thing. Uh, by the way... With all your sharp tools, you know, I, I keep this in the drawer of a toolbox in my van. You can use things like garden hose and, oh, like vinyl tubing and stuff like that to cover the sharp edges. Anyways, and look at that. Ooh, yes. This is just a piece of uh, carbide. I have scraped a lot of stuff with this and still got a nice square edge. So we'll get the heat sink compound scraped off. 
then I'm going to use this. I, I have some really nice heat sink compound that I use for some of my electronics projects, but it's expensive. Um, it's hard to spread. It is very high quality, but you know, these are pretty big surfaces. So I'm going to go back in with this. This is what I use for the heat sinks in LG, uh, Multi-V units, VRF units, they have big boards with enormous heat sinks. And so this is Super Lube. That's the part number. There is another part number on here, but I think that's an LG part number. Anyways, I'm going to get these cleaned up and get those sort of on there. And then I'll pick back up with the filming. I feel like I just gotta show this scraper in action because it just works so well. That carbide is just so sharp and straight. Just makes easy work of this. That took me about 10 seconds. Okay, there is also a temperature sensor that goes here. Now this is in a like transistor type package and I normally I, I'm just interested in this stuff and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go through the board and figure out the circuits and stuff I just I just don't have time for that right now but here is the part number if anybody cares so that needs to get mounted really nicely here so we're getting an accurate temperature of the hot plate. All right, let me get this done. Turns out that it's easier to actually just mount them in here on the hot plate and the sensor goes there. These little gadgets here just really take a beating. I mean, they're just, they're one of those electronic components that just takes a lot of abuse by just the nature of what it does. So, you know, there's a good chance that if you have a little wine cooler that stops working, that it's these. So I'm planning on probably replacing these again in the future whenever they die. So I am going to be putting spades on the harness side and on these. So it's just quick and easy to swap them out when I need to. Now, these spades are probably a little too big for this gauge of wire, but I'm going to use them anyway. And what I'm going to do is just fold the wire over so I have more wire to crimp in that terminal. All right, I've finished that. And if you look, the reds and blacks are tied together, so don't psych yourself out trying to worry you know figure out the polarity and all that kind of crap you know it's just red to red and black to black now i must say that these are very dangerous like can set your car on fire dangerous so i don't recommend that anybody else do what i'm doing <laughs> but I uh, am not going to throw this away, and I really like having a hot lunch. So, yeah, I, this thing's getting repaired. All right, I'm going to get everything plugged back in like it was. This connector goes into that board, and we're going to turn it on and see if it works. Okay, I've got it back together now. And if we look... I've kept an eye on this and it is rising at a steady rate. The hot plate is nice and hot and it'll continue to get hotter. And this here is nice and cold. It's beer can cold. See, the same uh, HVAC terms apply whether it's a compressor or solid state HVAC. <laughs> Here's a little bonus footage. If you're wondering what kind of amperage this thing pulls, about 2.4 amps. And it, it sort of cycles. So 
the relay in here will click on and off and like there it went out there is probably just the electronics and maybe some other things going on there